What's the word, y'all? I cannot believe the Miami Heat did it, man. Uh, I thought with them being down by 15 plus points in this game that this the main topic of this video is about to be about the Knicks and we're going to still talk about the Knicks. But I thought we were going to open up the show talking about the Knicks dominating the Cavaliers. But instead, we just saw one of the biggest choke jobs ever. And absolutely, I'm going to be hyperbolic today because I'm on edge. The, the, uh, the Warriors just won their first road game of the series. So like... Everything is happening right now, and I'm filming this right after that game ended, so if there's post-game interviews and rumors, or whatever, 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 just know I ain't seen it. I'm just out here, I'm out here reacting to the games that we saw today. I picked the Milwaukee Bucks to win the championship this year, and I'm not alone. They were the Vegas odds, fa Vegas favorites to win the 2023 NBA championship, and they just lost in the first round, and, and five. In five. Now, we dropped a video a few days ago talking about how injuries, of course, have played a big part in a lot of these series so far. Giannis went out early in game number one, missed game number two, and game number three came back, and it has not mattered. Um, th there's so much to talk about in this game alone. But I, I want to start off by giving the flowers and the love to Jimmy Butler, <laughs> to Gabe Vincent, to Bam Adebayo for getting this triple-double, even though he fouled out down the stretch, and to Coach Eric Spolstra, because he coached circles around Coach Bud. He made Coach Bud look like a JV in high school coach while he's one of the greatest of all time. You know that list of the top 15 coaches of all time? Spolster's on there for a reason. And you saw that in this series. And you saw that specifically in Game 5. And now we got the Knicks versus the Miami Heat in the second round. This is crazy. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to preview or whatever. That's not what today's about. But I just cannot believe we just saw an AC take out a one. For the first time in a very long time. Because we don't count the year that, that Derrick Rose tore his ACL. So, so I just cannot believe everything that happened in this particular game. Another example where Coach Budenhoser was awful. Simple as that. I was trying to find another way to put it. As simple as that. We talked about that in game four. How the Miami Heat went on a 13-0 run in this game. And he never called a timeout or nothing. And of course the Miami Heat went on to win that game. And this one, I can pinpoint time after time after time where Coach Bud did some ridiculously dumb thing. Example eight, using your challenge in the first quarter. I've, I've never seen a time where a challenge in the first quarter was worth it. Number two, the Miami Heat have a sideline out of bounds. And I can't say the only option is to throw the ball at the rim because there was a lot of different options. There was time left. But he, he yanked Brick Lopez out of the game so there was no rim protection on the shot that Jimmy, Jimmy Butler had no business making. But there's no rim protection at all on that shot. And then lastly, these are just the three of us on top of mind. I think if we rewatch that game, I could be like, oh, there's a moment, oh, there's a moment, oh, there's a moment. And lastly, not calling the timeout at all in overtime when his team didn't know what to do at all. Giannis is scared to get fouled. That's something we got to talk about. He's scared to get fouled. He gives it up. And I think it was to Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton gives it up to Grayson Allen. Your season is on the line and Grayson Allen has the ball with three seconds to go. If I'm the coach, I'm running to half court if I have to, to call this timeout. Because no way. They didn't get a shot up. Because Grayson Allen, it's not in his DNA to try to make this. He euro stepped with half of a second left on the clock. Like, there's no way Coach Bud coaches this game like that, bro. Also, I'm realizing that my lighting is going to be weird. I don't care. I'm, I'm already here. We already rambling. The, the offense in this series in general stunk. And the half court, a lot of the times in this fourth quarter and on overtime, not overtime, but in the fourth quarter, we got Giannis pull up mid-range jump shots. And it's like, uh, yuck, honestly. It's, it's, like, it's like yuck. And if you're Coach Spolster, you anybody on the Miami Heat, you like, we love that. We want him to take that shot over and over and over again. This is one of the first times, at least on the top of my mind, again, I, I, I'm just reacting, where I felt like Giannis was afraid. I, I remember in the NBA Finals last year, he had a game, or, or maybe it was the Finals of Conference Finals. Let me, let me fact check this, where he struggled so mightily from the line that he went up to the podium and he said, I'm still going to do what I got to do and get to the free throw line and let the results be the results. So I'm summing it up, but that's, that's something I remember. And for 85% of the game, that was facts. He ended up shooting 23 free throws tonight. 23 free throws. So he 100% wasn't afraid until it got down to those clutch ones. You know, on the jump ball, he almost turned it over because he saw two people coming at him so he wouldn't have to get fouled. And luckily, Chris Middleton saved the ball and ended up getting the Drew Holiday hands. And Drew Holiday missed the free throw. And then the last one is the last play of the game. Jimmy Butler kind of cut off the sideline, but it wasn't 
enough that would naturally prevent Giannis from doing what he could do. But since he cut it off with some contact, this is just me speculating. I don't know. But I, it felt like Giannis thought that maybe a whistle was going to come and he would much rather give the ball up to Chris Middleton to do something instead of getting fouled to go to the free throw line. Now, in this one, he shot... 23 free throws, and he missed 13 of them. He shot 43% from the line. He makes half a, half more of those. A, a couple more of those, they win this game, undoubtedly. And again, he's never been a good free throw shooter. I mean, we had the, the games um, in the finals where he dropped a 50-piece and he was perfect from the line where he turns to Steph Curry or uh, Steve Kerr or Jose Calderon from the free throw line, but that's not him. But even this is not him. Missing 13 free throws, shoot a 43%. That's what, 25, I'm not, 25 percentage points less than what he normally does? Like overall, if you were just looking at the stat line, 38, 20, and 3. Like that stat line is, is crazy. Like it, it felt like he was giving it all on the line. And for the most part he was, but there was these moments where he's afraid to get fouled that kind of, in some cases, swayed this game to the other side. Um, Giannis is the best player in the world. I've said that for a few years now. But I am 100% certain that after this game or being one of the few people to be a one seed and, and lose to an eight seed, people are taking, they're going to take that title away. And I'm not going to say they wrong. And again, I, I would still say he's the best in the world. But if, if somebody said, no, nah, he's not the best in the world anymore based on this, I can't say they're wrong. Now, again, he's dealing with the, the, the butt tox injury, the lower back injury and all of that. And that probably, not probably, that obviously played a major part in the series in general. I can't say specifically this game, but the series in general. Again, he missed two total games in the series. And then I, I might as well put it at three because he got injured so early in game number one. And again, I don't know what the severity is, but... But but maybe you know what I'm not even gonna say that because I, I can't I can't live in a world of speculation. I got too many people watching these videos. Um, but this is a historic collapse, even with Giannis missing the two games. Because I mean they showed us all season long in the games that Giannis hasn't played, or whether it be this year or last year, or whatever. This is the same core that they can pretty much get it done. I'm um, not saying that I would pick them to win a championship if Giannis is not there, but in a series like this where it is the Miami, let's be real. The Miami he played a great series, but the Miami Heat are very far away from a great team. They they just are. I mean, you, I mean, I know Heat fans are riding high, and they should because they just pulled off something legendary. But until the play-in or the, the win against the Bulls in the play-in, 98% of the Heat fans were done for the season, right? Like, they watched them in 82 games and came to the realization, oh, this is a lost year. You just lost to that team in a seven-game series, and it didn't even come close to being seven. It was a straight-up five. I don't see how Coach Bud keeps his job. Um, I had already heard some people kind of calling for him because even basically saying that that he had been carried by the postseason run that ended up in a championship. And again, being a championship coach is something that only few people in the world can say. So it's not like, I can't say he's a, the worst coach of all time because he was the coach on a team that won a championship. And yes, Giannis dropped 50 and was turned, again, turned to Steve Kerr at the free throw line. But coach still, I mean, uh, Bud still coached that series and coached that team. So he's very far from being awful. But in this series, he looked close to it. Knicks versus Heat. Now, I'll be honest with you, Spo. Tom, Tom Thibodeau just coached one hell of a series in itself. He just coached one hell of a series in itself. So you're not about to go against a Coach Bud level coach. You're going against another one of the best in the league right now. So I'm very curious to what that's going to look like because it's going to be a chess match. But again, we're going to get to preview on that once we get closer to it. I do want to talk about this series that I would say that, of course, now other than the Bucks. Um, the most disappointing team in the playoffs for me has been the Cavaliers. This is a series where I picked the Cavaliers to win in seven. I knew the Knicks were really, really good, but I ultimately went with the Cavaliers to win the series before it started because I thought the Donovan Mitchell and the star factor would be a little bit too much, and I overestimated that, and I underestimated the depth and the coaching of the New York Knicks because my pick to be in seven, another situation where it wasn't, it wasn't even close to being seven. There was no moment in this game five where I felt like, okay, the Cavs, here they go. I think there was one moment, actually, where um, third quarter, DG hit a three to cut it into whatever. And I was like, okay, maybe a run is about to come. It did not happen. It, it did not happen at all. The Knicks have had this season or this series very, very easily. Um, and we got two bad games of R.J. Barrett. The last time we talked about the series, we were talking about how R.J. hadn't showed up. And since then, he's been playing phenomenal basketball. I did not expect for Mitchell Robinson to be the best big man in the series. Simple as that. Remember, Jared Allen was an all-star last season, and Evan Mobley just finished third in DPOY this year. So, like, I was pretty confident that at least one of those dudes would be able to outplay Mitch Robson. Absolutely not. Mitch Robson was everywhere all series long, whether it be protecting the paint or getting extra opportunities. Tonight, specifically, he had 11 offensive rebounds. 11 of them things. And him single-handedly made a front court of two seven-footers look 
small, look tiny. And I also didn't account for basically Jalen Brunson being the best player in the series. Simple as that. Like tonight, again, he didn't shoot the ball crazily. 36% from the field, two for six from three. So it wasn't a great shooting night for him. But he outplayed Darius Garland. He outplayed Donovan Mitchell in this entire series. Um, and that's this is so crazy because Julius Randle didn't have a good series. There's no reason the Cavs shouldn't have at least made this a six-game series, a seven-game series, or something. Julius Randle got injured in this one. And in one of the games, he didn't even play in the fourth quarter because the other the other people on the roster were just playing better. And that's a testament to Tom Thibodeau being a, a good coach. And there's a testament to the depth because, again, there's there was no uh, quitting grinds for the last couple games. Doesn't matter. Q Grimes has been started for a great majority of the season. They lost them. Didn't matter. Josh Hart slid into that starting line today. Before that, we saw uh, Miles McBride minutes the game before. Do you know how how demoralizing or backbreaking it is uh, uh, for, for your team to get out-rebounded on the offensive glass by 13? 13? I love what Josh Hart said to Mitchell Robinson. He told Mitchell Robinson, you get rebounds. I I get rebounds that like break hearts. I don't know. I, I don't know the exact quote. Whatever. And it's true. When you got to do like Josh Hart, who, like, let me see who they list Josh Hart as. A 6'4 wing crashing in, getting offensive boards. That is the moralizer. And now we add Mitchell Robinson getting 11 specifically tonight. It's like, boy, what are we supposed to do? I'm realizing that the, my lighting has been all over the place this video. Hey, you, 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 got, you got to accept it, man. It's, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. We, we got to film. The only bad thing for the New York Knicks as that came out today is that the fact that the Miami Heat won their game, which means they won their series, which means that this series is starting way earlier than some of the other ones. Like, with Trey Young hitting that shot, uh, Joel Embiid gets an extra couple days of rest, and you would have wanted a couple extra days of rest for Julius Randle's ankle. We don't know much about that other than he didn't, he didn't play the second half. Um, and again, Julius Randle is a all-NBA. He might make all-NBA this season. Didn't need him this series. Is that crazy? They didn't need him this series. That's uh, that's unreal. But again, we're about to see some coaching uh, juggernauts potentially go at it. And that's going to be fun. They say a series does not start until the road team wins a game. And the Warriors did that. The, the Warriors did that. Who expected a 20-piece from Draymond Green? Because if you got your hand up, I'm saying you lying. Uh, Draymond Green coming off the bench might be the recipe for a run. Honestly, it's so crazy to say aloud. But he was super critical today. Um, and you know what? I'm going to allow Draymond to talk his stuff. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes Draymond be having those games where he 0 for 4 and then he finally hit one and now he talking and talking. I'm like, bro, you just missed the four previous ones. Be quiet. But nope, today he can talk all the trash he wants because they just took the series. I'm just, it's not over, obviously, Kings fans. But like, now you just need to win one and we're going back to Chase, a place that we don't lose that often. Mm, you know? We finally got a resemblance of a solid DeMontis Sabonis game. But, but it didn't matter. Because Kevon, Kevon Looney having another 20... I didn't realize he got to 20 rebounds. I mean, let's be... I'll be honest with you. Once this Heat um, Bucks game went to OT, the Warriors game kind of went on the back burner because this was more important. But I didn't realize he got up to 22 rebounds. I think the super unfortunate part for the Kings perspective is that some of their worst shooting nights of the entire season have happened in this series. I think... I mean, I haven't looked at... They shot 29% tonight. They had a, uh, one of the games that they end up winning. I think that was game two they end up winning was the worst shooting night of their season. And then game four was like the second worst shooting night. And I think this one might be in the top five or bottom five as well. Um, so young, young team missing a bunch of shots. It's kind of unfortunate. I think that De'Aaron Fox was dealing with his injury. And we didn't even get like a crazy Steph Curry game. We got, you know, the last possession where he just running around the court until he eventually got a layup. That's when I started to film this video. Because I was like, that's wraps. Um, but yeah, the Warriors took that game and now they're one game away. Uh, the Lakers lost their game. So we're going back to the Staples Center to see that one. Uh, I'm just excited at how great basketball has been in the first round of the playoffs. I'm a little bit afraid that like, because this is so good, um, that the second round might be mid, but I'm knocking on wood because I need it to be great. Uh, so shout out to Jimmy Butler and the Miami, Miami Heat, uh, just ri ridiculous history being made. And, uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow.